I have to be honest with you, I was given the chance to review this keyboard from Kinesis, which I really appreciate, but initially, I didn't think I would like it. It doesn't have hot swappable switches, it uses ABS keycaps, and it doesn't have the most advanced reprogramming capabilities like QMK or ZMK. However, what ended up happening was that I really liked this keyboard. In fact, I ended up loving it. It provided one of the best typing experiences I've ever had on a split mechanical keyboard. So let's dive into the reasons why my initial assumptions about this keyboard were completely wrong and why I think this is one of the greatest value split ergonomic mechanical keyboards on the market. Oh, wow, so it opens up split like that. Okay, already I see the nice braided cable. Oh yeah, that feels really good. Wow, this looks really nice. Oh my goodness. Oh, this cushion palm, is, I think it's gonna feel really good. We have the instruction manuals, nice braided cable, nice and long. We got USB-A regular stuff here. So you can remove this compartment to expose the longer cable. Right now it's a at a really good length, but you pop it out and then you can just pull the cable a lot more for that extra 20 inch length between the two splits. The first thing I, I wanna say is that the palm rest over here feel extremely comfortable. One of the things that's really bad with a lot of common big box manufacturing keyboards is that there's a positive tilt. And when your wrist is kinked like this, like that, I'm just exaggerating for demonstration purposes, it is extremely bad. And then when you start turning it over and hitting the control key, this can, can lead to a lot of repetitive strain injury. In fact, I experienced that before with some of my other split keyboards that didn't have really good palm alignment. This one just nails it. Like immediately there's a slip. The thing is, is like there's a slight elevation to the palm and the keys where some keyboards don't do that. It's kind of flat. Like imagine this, these padded, these pads weren't here and you just had some plastic thing over here. You wouldn't get the support you need in order to keep your hands in a neutral position. So I can already, I can already feel that. You can see how the palm rests are slightly taller than the keys or almost the same height. I think that's what definitely what you want. So let's take out one of the keycaps and see what they look like. Take it out. So we got brown cherry MX brown switches. You kind of have that small tactile bump. And this is actually really good when you're a touch typist and you want to be able to feel that actuation. That means that you don't have to bottom out and it makes it more ergonomic in the long term because bottoming out with every key press can put a lot of strain on your hands and cause repetitive strain injury. This is fantastic. Like it's been a while since I've had tactile switches and I'm I really like it. You can see that, that they're practically the same height and this is really good for a kind of symmetry. The most obvious and important feature of the Kinesis Freestyle Edge is its split design. One of the best things about a split keyboard is that it can be uniquely adjusted to your human form factor, your anatomy. I love being able to adjust the angles, which is key for keeping my wrist in a neutral position. This is much better than the traditional cheaper ergonomic keyboards, which often have a fixed position and they're not really tailored to you. The split design offers much more flexibility and comfort. Another key aspect of the split design is the ability to use both thumbs. In traditional typing, we typically only use nine digits, but here we can use all 10 of our fingers. This feature should not be underestimated. I usually bind one of my thumbs to the space bar and the other to backspace key which is incredibly useful for correcting mistakes. Having a split spacebar is one of the best things about having this type of design. So let's talk about the inbuilt palm rest. So many professional touch typists don't really use a palm rest because you know they're usually poorly designed or they don't properly ele uh, elevate to match the height of your keyboard. But these ones are inbuilt and they are integrated. So they extend slightly above the keys, allowing your wrist to be in the perfect neutral position, which is especially useful if you're new to touch typing or you experience fatigue when you're trying to float your wrist naturally when you type. Alternatively, you can always remove the palm rests, which is something you might wanna do when you're gaming. It's very easy to remove them, just pull them off, and to put them back on, you simply snap them into place. The ease of use also applies to their optional lift kit, also known as their tenting kit, which I'll discuss in a later section. So overall, the ability to snap these palm rests on and off along with the tenting kit just is a really great feature and a great design. They look nice, are very easy to clean, and are typically very expensive to buy separately, so it's great that it's included in the keyboard. All right, so let's talk about the layout. This is more or less a 10 key list layout, which means that it has an arrow key over here, a nice navigation layer cluster over here, 
you get your home up, page down, and all that great stuff. And another really cool thing about the arrow key, arrow key cluster is that it has a tactile bump on the marker on the up arrow. So this is just a nice way to locate it quickly and a nice attention to detail. Another thing I like about the arrow cluster being more integrated and closer is that you have to move your hand less to reach it, making it easier to navigate through text and jump through words. Now, of course, you have the function row over here, which could be a really big selling point for a lot of people who are looking for a split mechanical keyboard. This is one of the top critiques of the smaller layouts, which are more common. Many accountants, for example, prefer to have a function row. One thing I want to note is that the function rows are also aligned with the number rows. For example, F1 is aligned with one and F4 is aligned with the number four. This makes the operation of these keys a lot more intuitive, especially when I'm programming or video editing, as there's always a linear relationship between the number row and the function row. This is a nice little touch that Kinesis has brought into this keyboard. Additionally, the default mappings of the function row include media controls, which are accessed through a function layer key. You also get other useful features like the ability to quickly toggle between the end key rollover and game mode, which simply disables the Windows key. The layout also has a nice symmetrical design between the two halves, which makes it look very nice. There's just something really appealing about symmetry in general, so it's a nice touch. This symmetry is possible because it has macro, macro keys on the far left, with 10 smaller macro keys and one large one at the top left. The large one at the top left is a bit of mystery in terms of what I would use it for, but it could be really useful in gaming scenarios. For example, let's say you're in World of Warcraft and you need to bind a large cooldown spell or a critical ability for quick access. This macro key also makes it very easy to just really smash that button. A cool trick is to bind all these 10 buttons on the side to function keys from F13 and above. Most people don't know that function keys can go beyond from F12 all the way up to F24. So this is really handy because you can bind these extra function keys to unique abilities within different applications. For example, in Premiere Pro, you could bind F13 to export a clip. And in your code editor, you could bind the same key F13 to start debugging. This makes it a context-based binding, which can significantly improve your workflow. Now let's move to the top right quadrant of this keyboard where you notice four different keys profile, macro, remap, and the special settings icon. So the profile key is great because it lets you quickly switch between three different profiles. When you press it, if the light is on the left, that means profile one is active currently right now. If it's on the right, it means that profile two is active and if you press it again, both of them active, that means it's on profile three. Now in total, there are nine profiles. There's also a shortcut to access all nine additional press, uh, profiles by pressing the special settings icon followed by one of the number number keys. In general, profiles are fantastic for quickly switching between different key assignments, especially if you go from Windows, Mac, or to a specific application or game, the possibilities are endless. So the macro button is a feature I really love and I use it all the time. It allows you to assign a button to a dynamic macro, which is stored in the four megabyte onboard memory. To create a macro, simply tap it and then it'll start bl uh, blinking rapidly then you press any key you want, including the function layer keys by holding the function and another key. After that, type in your macro, which can include words, modifier keys, tabs, spaces, and more. This is really great for automation, especially if you need to perform repeated tasks. You don't need to open up any software to set this up. You can do this all directly on the keyboard, which is amazing. The remap button works similarly. You can permanently remap a button on the keyboard without using any software. Simply just press the remap button, assign the key you want to remap, and then assign the new key. This is quite a unique feature and something that I typically don't see on many other keyboards. It's absolutely convenient. Now let's talk about the keycaps and the switches. I'm not entirely sure of the exact shape of these keycaps. They feel like OEM, except they don't dramatically change in size and height. Typically with an OEM keyboard, the number of keys are sculpted very high upwards. So not all the keys are uniform or the same size, but on this keyboard, all the keys are pretty much the same size which is really convenient if you want to swap them around, maybe for a different layout. For example, in my case, I wanted to swap the page up and page down with the home and amp because I like to have the home and amp closer to the arrow key cluster. Overall, the keycaps feel great to type on. Now, in terms of the switches, these ones are using Cherry MX Brown switches, and it has been great to come back to MX Browns, which have a slight tactile bump. They're not clicky like the blue switches and not linear like the red switches. They are relatively quiet to type on, making them perfect for office use as they aren't very noisy. What's great about Brown switches is that it has a tactile bump, which is preferred by professional touch typists. The bump sends a signal to your brain that you've activated the key, so you don't need to bottom out. 
not bottoming out release pressure on your joints, which helps with ergonomics and long-term reduction of RSI injury. Overall, typing on brown switches with the tactile bump has been a complete joy. I really did miss them and I'm so glad that I'm reunited with them. It's kind of a shame that all my life I've been using red linear switches and I do regret it. So the last physical characteristic of this keyboard I want to talk about is the RGB lighting. First of all, the RGB lighting looks absolutely beautiful. It really shines through this, the keycaps and it looks stunning. There's no coil wine with the RGB, even at max brightness, which is a really nice premium feature. You also get all the kinds of effects that you typically get, like wave, static, reactive effects as you type on, and there are many effects to suit your preferences. You can customize all this, all of this in the Smart Set software. You can also get per key RGB, which is handy if you want to use the function layer by pressing the function key. So for example, I can press the function layer right now, and you can see that I have different keys lighting up specifically to give a visual indicator of a specially assigned, assigned key. So to conclude this section, I have to say the layout is simply amazing. It's really nice to come back to a near full size 10 keyless keyboard. When I was using the smaller keyboards with a 60% or smaller layout, I experienced layer fatigue. For example, to access the directional keys, I always had to engage a layer and this caused a lot more strain on my wrist with repeated use, especially with my thumbs. While this keyboard only has one function layer, which is a bit unfortunate, overall, it's refreshing to avoid layer fatigue and enjoy the convenience of a full layout. So let's talk about the optional accessory and that's the lift kit. There's also a pro version that doesn't require palm pads to be installed, but this particular one does. So tenting or lifting the keyboard to allow your wrist to be in a neutral handshake-like profile is more natural and can boost ergonomics. However, I want to give you a personal warning. Once you start tenting, it can be extremely hard to go back to a flat keyboard. Now I do notice that if I stopped using tenting for a while, let's say I take a break for a couple of days on the weekend and I come back to my keyboard and I have it lie flat, it feels normal to just go back to a flat keyboard. So in my opinion, if you feel no extra pain when you keep your keyboard in a flat profile, just to, just stick to that because in that way you don't have a dependence on tenting, which is useful if you have to switch to different keyboards or switch to your laptop. It just feels like you have a flat keyboard all around the place. So what I really like about the lift kit is that it's very easy to detach. Let me show you how, it, how it's done. You just simply squeeze it and pop it out. And then if you want to detach the palm rest, just pull it out. And this is very helpful if you're gaming and you want full access to the control key. Sometimes it's nice to not have any kind of interference with the palm rest or kind of be in a weird, awkward angle when you're tenting. So if you're just doing regular first person shooter, it's nice to just quickly detach all the ergonomic accessories, the palm rest and this lift kit. And then you can have your control key right here. Then it's more like a traditional keyboard and it's very easy to start gaming. Let's remove the other side for some symmetry. Detach it out, pull this out, just like that, very easy. So the lift kit allows for angles of 5, 10, and 15 degrees. Overall, while the lift kit is convenient, you don't necessarily need it. You can just use a random object to tent this keyboard if you really prefer. Now let's talk about the software. This is a very important aspect to consider when you're buying your next keyboard. So I really want to focus on this. And this is something I always look for in a new keyboard, especially a split mechanical keyboard, because the ability to remap and reprogram your keyboard is key to increasing ergonomics. Some of my most commonly used remapped keys are binding keys closer to the home row. Specifically, the caps lock is bound to escape on tap and on hold, it's enter. I can go into the function layer and get an arrow keys and enter and delete near the home rows as well. You can see that the per key RGB as well when I hold the function layer. My favorite one is simply shutting down windows with the function key and then backslash. This is so nice after a long time on the computer and you just wanna quickly shut down your PC because you're just so sick of it. Here's an example of a macro I use every day. You can program macros in the software or you can just do them live on the keyboard with the macro key I mentioned earlier. So the smart set software is very easy to use. However, there are some limitations for really advanced pro users. So you only get one extra layer and it's called the function layer. By default, it's bounded to the bottom left corner of the macro key keypad section. However, you can bind the function layer to any other key. This allows you to have two layers, effectively doubling the number of physical keys on your keyboard. Unfortunately, you can't have more layers, which is something you typically get with more premium expensive mechanical keyboards. Another limitation is the tap and hold functionality. While there is the ability to set a tap term in milliseconds default, let's say 250 milliseconds, you cannot assign the tap and hold functionality to any of the alphabetical keys. You also cannot assign the function layer to a tap and hold key. 
For example, I want it to bind my spacebar so that if I tap it once, it registers as a space, and if I hold it, it activates the function layer. Unfortunately, this isn't possible. The limitations of the software are mitigated by the fact that you have 11 extra keys on the macro pad, which is unconventional, but a nice touch. So in the end, given the larger layout, I think you're gonna be fine with just two layers. I was able to use this keyboard with all my workflows without any issues or anything like that. The only thing that I'm gonna miss is maybe having home row modifiers. So in conclusion, do I recommend this keyboard? Absolutely. Here are six reasons why I think this is the best value split gaming ergo mechanical keyboard. Number one, it's the split design. The two separate halves allow you to customize the angle and distance to suit your specific needs, making it superior to fixed gaming or ergonomic keyboards. Reason number two, unlike split exotic keyboard designs with fewer keys or significantly different layouts, such as those with concave key wells or ortholinear layouts, the freestyle maintains a traditional look and feel that is best suited for PC gaming. Number three, inbuilt palm rests. Many premium split mechanical keyboards require you to go and buy their palm rests separately, which can be very expensive, but these are included for free and they're easy to snap on and off, enhancing comfort and ergonomics with convenience. Reason number four why this is a great keyboard is the easy learning curve. This keyboard is more forgiving and easier to adapt, especially for non-touch typists. It's user-friendly compared to more complex layouts like ortholinear or columnar staggered keyboards, making it ideal for environments where you need to switch between different keyboards. Number five, similar to the previous one, simplicity. Split mechanical ergonomic keyboards come in various shapes and sizes, often featuring a 60% or smaller layout. They offer advanced remapping features like advanced layers, home row modifiers, and tap dancing. However, it was the freestyle edge that I discovered the value of simplicity and having more physical keys. Ironically, the simplicity of a larger layout have been key in combating repetitive strain injury or RSI. You see, unlike the smaller, more complex keyboards that required constant layer switchering, which worsened my RSI, the Freestyle Edge with its mere two layers became a forcing function to move my hands more around the keyboard. It's similar to the advice given for sitting. It's healthier to change positions often than to remain in the perfect posture. In my personal experience, I noticed that frequently moving my hands around, although less efficient, was a lot less straining to my wrist than having to you know, rigidly stick to the home row and use home row modifiers and all that perfect touch typing stuff. So with the Freestyle's larger layout featuring all the necessary keys, you won't need to spend months reprogramming your brain to learn complicated layers or exotic configurations. This keyboard allows you to start being productive from day one. And for reason number six, it's the price. While this is still a large investment, this keyboard hits this sweet spot in terms of price to performance ratio compared to other expensive options. It offers great value without sacrificing essential features. Now, yes, there are some potential trade-offs with this lower price. For example, unlike some split mechanical keyboards, this cannot be combined into one single unit. However, folding the two halves makes it very compact for transportation. Another potential trade-off is the non-detachable cables. While slightly inconvenient, this is totally manageable, especially if you don't plan to move your keyboard around. Another trade-off is the software limitations. You won't get advanced programming features like home row modifiers, but the included software covers all the basics very effectively. My next point may be a pro or con. This has a traditional design. It lacks the exotic layouts or reduced key, key layouts like the Kinesis Advantage 360 or let's say the Coronet 40. So those are the six reasons why the Freestyle Edge RGB is an amazing gaming mechanical split ergo keyboard. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll leave links in the description for this keyboard and I'll see you in the next video.